So we have a Patreon listener question, although this time around it's not so much a question as a request from our Patreon. This comes from Ian McRobbie, fan of the podcast and one of our big Patreon supporters. Thanks again, Ian, for everything that you give to us. Ian asks, well, he doesn't really ask. He says, this doesn't really qualify as a question, but I always like the historic centric stuff you guys do. Uh, a Minerva character toy, uh, character slash toy retrospective would be awesome. I don't know if there's enough meat on the bone to fully dive into. I bring it up because recently Fans Hobby revealed their third party Minerva at TFCon, and I'd like to learn more about this character. Um, there actually is quite a bit of meat on the bone, Ian. Um, uh, quite a few years ago, I want to say like six, seven years ago, I did a, a retrospective of this character uh, in a YouTube review. And if you kind of Google, I think if you, not Google, if you check on YouTube, type uh, Proto Retro Minerva, um, probably the video will come up. But mind you, that video was done many years ago, mm. and there's been a lot more Minerva merchandise since then. I tried to cover as much as that existed back then. Um, I, I kind of did that whole review was because at the time the Kotobukiya uh Gutu Kuru Minerva figure came out. So I kind of used it as an excuse to do a whole historical. That's a lot of times, a lot of my videos, that's why I do them. It's not so much that I want to do a historical. Something new came out and it gives me an excuse to look back. And so, but here we have now an excuse to kind of, let's let's do an updated version of that uh, toy review that I did all those years ago. So Minerva, for people who don't know, um, She's kind of one of these historical characters in Transformers history in the sense that she really was uh, technically the first ever female character to get a toy. Um, obviously, you know, s since then, there's been all these silly little retcons here and there and, you know, stuff that I don't even agree with where it's like, oh, you know, that 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 Transformer, like, you know, transforming RC toy that came with the Tyco RC, you know, racetrack set. Yeah, that was a girl, you know, uh -huh. it's. Like, you know, they do silly stuff like that now on, like, the TF wiki and everything. But officially, the first ever official Transformers female character toy was Minerva. Or as she was shipped as on her packaging, Manelba, because, you know, Japan with their lack of letters with L's and R's and V's and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So Minerva was the first one, uh, was a repaint of the character of Nightbeat, as we know in America. And uh, was pretty much a Porsche ambulance, if that that would be a thing. A Porsche nine uh, 959 Porsche mm. a uh, ambulance. So um, that was pretty much a, a, a really weird thing that came out. It came out during Master Force. And it didn't sell very well, that character, because it was a female character. And it was, you know, one of the things that Takara always talked about, how female characters don't sell well. And so Minerva ended up being extremely valuable in the secondary market now like yeah. a, a complete mint in box minerva today could run you sometimes as much as 1500 to 2000 dollars easily not to mention the fact that because she's uh, a toy that's cast in white it's one of those toys that kind of suffers from yellowing throughout the years so to get like a bone white really nice minerva mint in box is going to cost you a pretty penny now obviously uh, they also did like a mail order kind of gimmick in japan Sometimes when specific American exclusive characters exist or American exclusive toys exist, Takara would do like the robo point kind of gimmick. Okay. And if you pretty much sent in four robo points and 1,800 yen, you could get what was called Nightbeat Minerva, which was pretty much just our Nightbeat toy that we got here in America. Um, so it was just pretty much a way for Japan to be able to get Nightbeat. Um, mm. Years later, when they did the... Uh, I'll, I'm jumping ahead here, but when they did the the Minerva figure go to Kuru from Kotobukiya, they'd actually homage this Nightbeat version, and we'll get into that as we move in the future. Now, um, at that point, now Minerva really didn't have anything after 1988. It was kind of like a gap. Obviously, Master Force ended, and you know other stuff was focused on. There was a few bootlegs during that time, um, and one of the most notable ones was there's one called the Aladdin bootleg. It was a Korean company called Aladdin, uh, took the Minerva toy, bootlegged it, kind of changed the colors a little bit, but it more or less gets across the same idea of the original Minerva, uh, retooled the chest a little bit, and actually gave her a, a cross on her chest, like the Red Cross. So mm -hmm. it's even a little more, um, I guess, I don't want to say accurate, but a more appropriate for her character, so even a, a bootleg kind of, like, improved it a little bit. Okay. Uh, plastic quality wasn't too bad, but, I mean, I own the bootleg, too, 
just to like compare and everything. And it's in that same uh, video that I referred to that you could find on my Proto Retro channel. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's probably the cheapest way to get that mold of that character at the moment. And I know that Repro Labels has a sticker sheet that's kicking around so you could add the stickers on it too to like make it look even more accurate. Oh, um, okay. I know that um, one of the former podcasters, Cheers Ian, on the podcast here, uh, he got that bootleg version and he put the sticker sheet on it. He painted the face a little bit and it looks pretty dead on. Like if you put it next to it, like if you would have like took a photo of it and said, oh, this is the original uh, Minerva, it's pretty believable. Oh, so, okay, okay. so that's a pretty good choice for a lot of people. Now, again, Minerva didn't really have much until the PVC line, the SCF PVC line, which ran for 12 waves. Um, the Super Figure Collection line had two different Minerva figures. It had a PVC of Minerva in Act 2, as in the giant robot itself. And then in Act 5, you got Metal Hawk and Minerva together, Minerva being in her human form in both color and pewter. And, of course, the robot one came in color and clear plastic. This was the PVC line. They didn't transform. They were about, I want to say, two, two and a half to three inches, these figures. And it was just, you know, it was kind of a celebration line, just kind of going through all of Generation 1's history from Generation 1 all the way until uh, Battle Stars with even Star Convoy and stuff. So there's just a, a nice little line here and there. And then, of course, we would then have another gap of no Minerva product and everything. Little homages here and there. Um, I know that like Galaxy Force with the character of Chromia, she got like a Minerva, a Minerva color kind of repaint, but they never really addressed it as Minerva. They just they just went, oh, here's a female character. Let's give her Minerva colors. And mm. and she was a DVD exclusive. Um, you know, some people speculate that Nitro Convoy was a Minerva homage. I don't really see that one so much. <laughs> Um, maybe the orange face? I don't the, know. Well, the orange face for the female version, maybe. That's the mm. only thing I could think of because Nitro Convoy originally had a gold face. So that's ah. why that's where, you know, I kind of say like, mm, I don't know about that. Um, and then Wonderfest. And I want to say, I don't know the, I forget the year exactly, um, but I paid stupid money for this thing. Uh, Wonderfest, I, I want to say it was like 2010 or 2009. Wonderfest had their one day license uh, exclusives where they do all kinds of figurines and stuff. And they did a Minerva human form with Master Force armor, one day exclusive resin cast uh, figure. And I paid, who oh man, I paid a lot of money for this. My buddy hooked me up. And when uh, I got it, being those, you know, resin cast kind of things, you got to have them built. They come with water transfers for the eyes and stuff. Um, it was all molded in color, which was good, so it didn't have to be painted, but it just had to be built, and it's one of those things that I got one of a friend of the podcast, Wendell knows who we're talking about, Lou from Sci-Fi Anime. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll always hype up his store. I've been He's probably one of the longest-running anime stores in our city here in Montreal. He's been around yeah. since, God, 1995 and going strong still to mm -hmm. this day, still selling model kits. Um so I brought it to him. He built it for me. It looks spectacular. Uh, it has interchangeable hands, interchangeable faces, little accessories. It comes with a little repair kit she holds, like a little like suitcase. Uh, you know, you can have her with her helmet on, without her helmet, with her long hair. Looks pretty cool, but it was extremely expensive. And being those resin kits that they were, not exactly something you can mess around with like crazy because they're kind of fragile too, you know? So it's something where it looks nice in photos, but to get that one photo, you're really like, you know, playing with kids' gloves. Yeah. A couple of years later, we get to, and this is where I jumped al already into the future, uh, Gutukuru with their Kotobukiya line by CM Corporation. They made this amazing Minerva figure that was like, I want to say it was like nine inches tall, came with like three interchangeable faces, different hands, different facial expressions. You could remove the helmet. You know, you could have her with her hair around the back. You know, like it even, it, even the back, even her back itself, which shows the headmaster head was transformable. It was just this amazing figure from the short-lived uh, Goto Kuru line from CM Corporation with uh, Goto Bakia. And those things were amazing. And they did Minerva in her regular colors. And then they did a special Wonderfest version with the Nightbeat colors. And what was cool about that was 
They also did a Ginrai, which I think is amazing, like that Ginrai one. And mm-hmm. the Gin and the Minerva, when you bought the Minerva one, it came with an interchangeable head that was exclusively made for the Ginrai if you wanted to make them look like High Q, the American version of Power Master Optimus Prime. So it was it was just this like incredible like little set of things. And it was short lived, which is sad because I kinda wish that it was really successful and they could have done all the other Master Force characters. But the Minerva one, I'm glad they started with her. And that they, they at least did well enough to then do a second version repaint. And, I mean, it's still to this day probably the best version of that human character that you could get. Now, the last thing that exists of her uh, from an official standpoint is they when God Ginrai came out in the Japanese version of Legends, mm-hmm. um, it came with Minerva, uh, but just the head, essentially. Now... It's this pr- primarily comes from the fact that we had a Nightbeat Headmaster Titan Master that was like a single pack thing that you could buy in stores and it was just the head. So they took just that single pack Nightbeat head, repainted it like Minerva, mm-hmm. included it with God Ginrai in the multi pack, which came out in 2017 from the Legends line. And we just got a Minerva just like that. And she also obviously came with Cab and uh, God Bomber was there too. So that was pretty much it for official Minerva merchandise. And of course, you know, obviously this was used as an excuse for her to appear in the Transformers Legends comic books that were done by Sakamoto. And Sakamoto also included all kinds of homages to all the crazy stuff throughout the years. Now, how this whole Patreon question pretty much spawned was because uh, the third party company Fans Toys is going to be doing a... I want to say it's a classics kind of interpretation of the character. And it looks really good. I got to handle it in person at TFCon. Looks really high quality stuff. And I'm really looking forward to uh, picking that up when the final version of it comes out. We still haven't seen color images of it yet. Yeah, but that's still kind of like resiny looking. Yeah, it's still, we still on. have the, the resin version, unfortunately. Um, but that's pretty much it for Minerva for now. Again, if you want a more uh, visual representation of some of the stuff that I've talked about, check Proto Retro uh, on YouTube. That's my YouTube channel for reviews. Just type Proto Retro Minerva on YouTube search uh, engine, and it'll, it'll pop up. And uh, I mean, it's, it's a dated video, so I don't even I don't even know if that comes from my HD years. If it was from no, HD. I think it was before that. Yeah, like, maybe. I remember it looked very dark. Yeah, <laughs> so that's, the, that's the only way I can kind of tell. Yeah, the lighting's a little bit. So weaker. It's, it's probably <laughs> sorry from, to say. Yeah, it's from the earlier years when I was still recording on a potato. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, either way, that's one way if you want to kind of get a visual representation of some of the stuff that I'm talking about. Maybe, uh, maybe just have it playing in the background on mute while we're while we're talking. I don't know. Um, but it's uh, pretty cool stuff. The character Minerva, uh, from a fictional standpoint, outside of let's say the the craziness of the Legends comics that Sakamoto did, she was essentially. Uh, primarily only in the Master Force cartoon, uh, and she was also in the Master Force version of the manga. She was going to appear in the Transformers Victory manga because some of the other Master Force characters returned older in the Victory one, but apparently um, the the manga artist uh, Matsume Kanada uh Kaneda, excuse me mm. who uh who did the manga he was going to include Minerva but then he kind of stopped at the last second cuz he was like ah well we have all these other female characters in Victory and we didn't want there to be too many female characters in this boy based you know shonen manga and because and Minerva would have returned and I think she would have been uh 18 years old or 17 years old if she would have returned to that and he showed on his Twitter years later how she would have looked if she did appear in the manga and it looked really good and stuff. It was really nice art. Uh, maybe I'll post that as one of the images uh, on, um, on the segment here, but this is, that's, that's pretty much it for the history of Minerva. One of the, one of the more obscure female characters in Transformers history, but just as important if mm-hmm. anything else. Uh, obviously the name of the character and stuff like that would appear in other Transformers media, but it doesn't really represent the Minerva that we think of. Because, like, there was a Minerva that was inanimated, but it really was, you know, just kind of, it was, and I believe it was voiced by Chris Latta's daughter. That was, it was at um, BotCon 2011, we had, uh, Minerva was a, um, a, what do you call it, an animated Minerva uh, custom class figure. 
which unfortunately I never got because it was hard to get into the custom class back then. Uh, but we got the trading card, which was handed out to everybody, and it was signed by Chris Latta's daughter, who voiced her at the script reading. So, you know, you have that version of Minerva. And then, of course, um, there also was a Minerva that appeared in the Transformers Collector Club, but again, a different different interpretation of that character. But otherwise, that's Minerva in a nutshell, so hope that uh, answers your, I guess we'll, we won't call it your question, your interest, Ian. And uh, if anyone else is interested in asking anything, be sure to join the Patreon it's really cheap for five bucks. For five bucks, you can help support the Patreon, help support the podcast, and it also gets you in on all kinds of crazy stuff and be able to contribute to the creative of our fair podcast. So thanks again, everyone. Hope that was an interesting retrospective.